What's up, everybody? We're live. We are live. Episode 44. We are here, ready to drink some whiskey. Um, I hope everyone's having a great week. I am your host, Connor Gilbert, and I appreciate you guys tuning in to episode 44 of Who Gives a Dram. If you're a new listener, thanks for checking out the show. If you're a returning listener, I appreciate your continued support. Um, the best way to support the show, you guys, is just to subscribe on every pla- podcast platform that you listen to. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Um, like the videos over there and leave a rating and review on iTunes. That's the best way to, to support the show. If you like who gives a dram and you and you want to support uh, you want to support me, that's the best way to do it. Um, this podcast is also brought to you by the Grapevine Media, www.thegrapevinemedia.com. The guys over there are doing a great job now that NFL season is back. We do a lot of football related uh, topics over there. I have a few football related podcasts. Um, including one fantasy football podcast. So go check us out over there. There's a lot of different content. It's not just whiskey. A lot of a lot of football, a lot of fantasy sports, a lot of betting, a lot of uh, financial um, topics that we're covering. So it's a great place, and I'd appreciate it if you checked us out, www.thegrapevinemedia.com. Uh, so today we are going to be reviewing a bottle of Henry McKenna 10-year single barrel bottled and bond um, bourbon whiskey, 10 years old. And Henry McKenna was one of the first bottles that I knew was allocated, kind of, and I wanted to get it, found it pretty quickly, and it's very quickly turned into one of my favorite bottles. Um, so I'm excited to review it on the podcast. I'm excited to you know, officially give a who gives a, a who gives a dram stamp of approval on it and see where I'm going to rate it. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to be pretty high, uh, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, I apologize if my voice sounds a little weird. Um, I'm 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 not sick, but I'm I'm f- not feeling the best. Uh, I kind of just sore throat, coughing a bit, tired. You know, it's it's been a it's been a long few days, but. Nevertheless, we're here. Whiskey is actually healthy for you. There are several studies that say that drinking an ounce of whiskey a day or about a shot a day, it is actually several health benefits to that. So in my mind, this is healthy what we're doing. This is, I mean, I'm getting back into my lifting routine now. I'm start trying to eat healthier. This is part of it. It's part of... Um, a healthy lifestyle, drinking whiskey. That's how I look at it, at least. But yeah, we're here. Got a few things I want to talk about. Um, hope everyone's having a great week. Uh, NFL Sunday. Let's talk about the NFL a little bit. Football's back. Finally back. The fans are back in the arenas. We got about 100 rookie quarterbacks playing. And the Chiefs are still nasty. So everything is right in the world. And the Giants still suck. (laughs) My team's the Giants. I've always been a Giants fan. And the past, what, five years? Really, since they've gotten Saquon and even before that, they've sucked. So I'm used to that. I'm used to that disappointment now. I've kind of become accustomed to the Giants barely winning any games, so I've shifted my focus to look at the NFL as a whole. Um, And looking at the NFL as a whole um, this week, I would would have to guess that the Arizona Cardinals are the favorite to win the Super Bowl after week one. They looked unstoppable. And I I don't pay attention to, to the entirety of the NFL in depth like some of our uh, some of uh, the guys over at Great Vine Media do. So I didn't realize that DeAndre Hopkins, James Conner, and J.J. Watt all played for the Arizona Cardinals now. You know, joining Kyler Murray, the former number one draft pick. That's a stacked team, plus Chandler Jones, five sacks in the first game. That's got to be one of the most talented families of all time, the Jones family. Because they have two brothers in the NFL and then John Jones, the consens- consensus in the top three greatest MMA fighters of all time. Many people put him as number one. So that's a talented ass family over there. 
the Jones family. Um, I thought the Patriots, you know, the Patriots are my home are, are are my home team. You know, the New England Patriots. I'm in New England. I thought the Patriots looked pretty good. I thought they put way too much pressure on Mac Jones. I thought he threw it. I thought he he made too many, way too many pass attempts, and that's never a good thing to 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 put on a rookie. Never mind putting it on a rookie in his first NFL game ever, um, and first NFL start. So I think Mac Jones is going to be the real deal. I just think that the Patriots need to reevaluate kind of how they're going to shift their offense to to uh, you know curtail to a, a rookie quarterback. You can't just have Mac Jones passing it fifty times every single game. But they seemed like they they were uh, you know tight knit and they seemed like they were doing a good job. Obviously, Bill Belichick. You know he's gonna. You know Bill Belichick is going to is going to perform and he's going to be he's going to be ready for every single team every single week. So, that's not a concern. It's more of the fact that they have that this very very talented rookie quarterback that um you shouldn't be putting too much pressure on. That's really what that comes down to. Um last night's game, I didn't really watch last night's game. Last night was the Raiders versus the Rams. I know the Raiders won. Um I know it was a, a crazy game there at the end. Just didn't watch it. Um, it's been a busy week for me. Um, I'm getting back into my powerlifting swing of things. So I'm training multiple times a week. Uh, I'm training with my cousin who's actually entering into a competition. I'm just training alongside him. But um, I've always enjoyed doing that, and I do it with my family. So I... You know, I'm, I'm all in on it. I'm all for it. Um, but that does come with some restraints, restraints that I need to I need to do. And that I, essentially, I don't need to do them, but I'm going to do them because my cousin's doing them, and I don't want to make him go through it alone. So I want to talk about exactly what I've been drinking this week because that might change in the next coming weeks because I'm, besides the podcast, besides doing reviews uh, every single week, I am going to try my best to go relatively sober and really dial in on a little bit of training uh, because it makes me feel good. And, you know, I'd be lying if I said, you know, a month ago I didn't look, I didn't like what I was looking at in the mirror. So I've been slowly working on that. And I think that by going sober, meaning no whiskey, no alcohol, and no cigars, it kind of just helps me focus on the task at hand but I love doing these reviews and I love doing this podcast so I want to keep on doing this um so with that being said what could potentially be one of the one of the not the last what what have what have I been drinking uh segments but they could be sporadic from here on out um I decided to pour a little bit of rebel 10 year single barrel um, bourbon on Sunday to celebrate the opening weekend of the NFL season. Um, and we are going to be reviewing that soon here on the show. Uh, so I won't get into much detail about it. It's a fantastic pour. I was lucky to find it. You can not really find it in too many spots. Um, and without going into too much detail, I will say that it's incredibly oaky and take it or leave it. That's what I get. But we'll dive into that at a at a later point. I also smoked a what did I smoke? I forgot what I smoked. I got a cheap cigar Friday night with my brother. Like an eight dollar cigar. Ah, I wish I remembered the name of it. But I don't. And I don't think I bought any bottles this week. I'm still trying to budget correctly and not spend money on bottles every single week so if anyone out there is listening and wants to send me some samples get a hold of me through instagram i'd be happy to review them um i also want to give a few shout outs on the podcast I haven't done a shout out in a few weeks um to a few different people that uh you know i've been in contact with and 
that I just like to converse with online, and I think they're great accounts, and I think they do a great job with what they're doing. Uh, first and foremost, um, Robbie and Cole over at Chill Filtered Podcast, shout out to you guys. I am not someone who's going to dive into an incredible amount of detail uh, with the whiskeys that I drink and the whiskeys that I review. Uh, just simply because I don't know a lot of the history behind these bourbons, I'm learning more about them, and I love to learn about them, but there are so many people who can explain those details better than I can that I kind of just leave that to them. So Cole and Robbie over at Chill Filtered Podcast are two of those guys. I actually listened to their Henry McKenna podcast in lead up to recording this so I could catch up on a few uh, history lessons and some details that I should have known uh, before recording, and it helped me out a lot. So shout out to you guys over there, uh, Chill Filtered Podcast on Instagram, and they're available wherever you can listen to podcasts as well. Uh, I was on the Chill Filtered Podcast uh, two months ago maybe uh, with Robbie, and we did Rebel Yell, just the standard Rebel Yell. Now it's called Rebel. Uh, there's no yell to it anymore, but that was a great time. I had a fantastic time talking with Robbie, and that was fun to do. So if you haven't checked that out, I will link that down below uh, my episode on the Chill Filter podcast. Make sure you listen to that episode. That was fantastic. Um, so shout out to you guys over there. Thank you for um, providing some of the information <laughs> about Henry McKenna for me to record this podcast. Uh, also, my buddy Dan over at uh, Barbecue Bourbon Barbells. Um, I haven't shouted ha him out on the podcast yet, and he was really one of the first people that I got in contact with when I started my Who Gives a Dram Instagram page and I started the podcast. And, I mean, if you're not following him, you really should be because he's one of the best follows out there. Um... <clears throat> He just started a new whiskey page, too, that I wanted to shout out. I think it's called Whiskey Pictures. Um, Dan does a lot of uh, short clips and short movies uh, with his incredible Sam Elliott voice. So he's doing that over there. He created an Instagram page specifically for that, and it's called, yeah, Whiskey Pictures. Whiskey Pictures on Instagram. Um... So go give him a follow over there. I followed him right off the bat. And uh, go follow Barbecue BBQ, BBQ Bourbon Barbells. I mean, just one of the well, just one of the best guys online. I, I love seeing his content. Preaching, getting outside, getting that fresh air, moving, getting your workouts in, eating good steak, and drinking good whiskey and smoking good cigars. Doesn't get more manly than that. So, um. Dan will be coming on the uh, the podcast here soon, so I'm excited for that as well. And you guys, you know what? It's spooky season. It's spooky season now. I know this is technically the second podcast we've recorded in September, and for me, spooky season starts September 1st and goes to October 31st, but the further through September we go, the more spooky it gets. And a lot of the times in New England, the first half of September still feels like the dog days of August. But we got lucky this year, and it's cooling off quick. The nights are nice and crisp. The daytime, you know, middle of the day isn't too bad in terms of heat. So it really does feel like fall. And what's the best thing to do during spooky season? Watch scary movies. And I found an Instagram account um, that I've been speaking with uh, consistently because I'm a huge movie nerd. Um... And I really do like my my horror movies. And it's uh, it's Whiskey Morgue on Instagram. And I thought his concept of taking a picture of a bottle of whiskey uh, with a horror movie playing in the background and pairing those two, I thought that was totally unique and awesome. So... I'm gonna have him on the podcast as well, and we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk horror movies. We're gonna talk horror films, uh, films in general. Probably talk a little. You know, we'll definitely be reviewing a whiskey. But um, go follow him because he's awesome. I don't know his name though, and I probably should. 
so I apologize, Whiskey Morgue, if you've told me your name. I just don't remember it. But seriously, one of my favorite accounts. And now that it's spooky season, and now that it's fall and Halloween's upon us, um, I think it's an appropriate, I think Whiskey Morgue is an appropriate account to follow. So go check them out over there, Whiskey Morgue, Chill Filter Podcasts. Be, uh, barbecue bourbon barbells and whiskey pictures and last but not least whiskey morgue three shout outs this week um all great whiskey content creators great podcasters just great guys so go check them out also shout out to karthik and matt over at phenomenal spirits they shipped me this awesome rye three whiskey shirt as you guys know rye three whiskey is my highest rated um rye whiskey on the podcast so far so i appreciate you guys i appreciate uh you guys being karthik and matt uh sending me over this shirt i really appreciate it it's awesome it's like a baseball three-quarter sleeve um t-shirt and you know hugs the guns nice and well so got to keep these bad boys contained um i was telling one of my friends the other day that it sucks for me because so I'm like I'm 24 years old now and whenever someone says hey Connor you're 24 I don't know if they're talking about my age or my biceps um so that's kind of annoying <laughs> get a cork <laughs> get a cork pop in here gonna pour a little bit of this whiskey in the snoot glass go over to snootglass.com www.snootglass.com enter the promo code wg 8020 and you will get 20% off your entire order. So that's pretty cool. Um, speaking about Halloween, I've been thinking about Halloween a lot recently. And I don't... Everybody has their, fav- their favorite holidays, right? I would say for the majority of people, it's Christmas, Thanksgiving. I would say it's a mix between Christmas or Thanksgiving. But I think Halloween is slowly becoming my favorite holiday. And it's not necessarily even the holiday, the day of the of the day. It's more so about the time of year that circumf that you know circumferences that particular holiday. So you have Christmas season, obviously that comes with Christmas. Thanksgiving is kind of like uh pre-Christmas season, football you know, you're in the heart of fall, um, but the beginning of fall and the in the initial change of the color of leaves here in New England and the crispness, bonfires, all those good things about fall, I correlate with Halloween. So gun to my head right now, if you had to make me do a power ranking for every single holiday, I would probably put Halloween first. I really would. I'm curious of what you guys think. I want to know what your favorite holidays are. Is it is it 4th of July, Easter, your birthday? I consider birthdays holidays, by the way, because it's your day. Um, What's your guys' favorite holidays? Because I think mine now is Halloween. And I just watched the new movie Malignant on Amazon or HBO Max, maybe. Uh, I watched it last Friday, or no, I watched it Saturday, I think, and I don't want to give it away because it hasn't been out for too long yet, but, and I texted my mom this, or no, I'm sorry, I texted my Aunt Linda this, shout out to Linda, um, once the movie ended. It was the worst, best movie of all time, and that's where I'll leave it at. It's a it's a James Wan horror movie through and through. Um, you can really tell by some of the um, the cinematography shots. That's kind of just correlated with James Wan. There is one scene that follows the main character through her house. She's running through her house, and the camera angle is coming from the roof, but. You can see all the rooms. It's kind of just following her as she's running through the house. So James Wan. That's such a James Wan thing to do. And of course, there's a creepy looking house that is that is just encompassed by fog the entire movie. That's such a James Wan thing as well. 
it was it was a very different horror flick and it was very unique and that's why I liked it there are definitely some things that were lacking about it but overall I think it was good and maybe we'll talk about it a bit more maybe we'll talk about it with Whiskey Morg when he comes on he's going to be coming on in October at some point so um, maybe we'll we'll talk a little malignant um it doesn't crack my favorite horror movies though. I have a concrete list of my favorite horror movies and Malignant was not on there. There are some things that I really didn't like about Malignant, but um overall it was definitely very unique. And if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So this whiskey now that we're 20 minutes in, why don't we get actually get into the whiskey? This whiskey, Henry McKenna 10-year bottled and bond single barrel bourbon. Um, obviously single barrel means that this, the, the tasting notes could differ from barrel, from bottle to bottle being as this is coming from a single barrel. This particular bottle is barrel is coming from barrel number nine zero six three. And it was barreled on 12, 16, 2009. I love when the labels are handwritten. I just think it's such a cool aspect to have on the bottles. Um, and the bottle in general for Henry McKenna, short and stout, just like me. So that, so I like it. Obviously, bottle and bond. Uh, this is a 50% ABV uh, whiskey, 100 proof. Uh, we've done a few bottle and bond whiskeys on the show before. But just to generalize what that means, it needs to be uh, distilled in one distilling season under one master distiller. It needs to be uh, aged in a federally bonded warehouse, and um, it needs to be at least four years old, um, along with being 100 proof. Those are the four main requirements to be a bond, bottled and bond bourbon. Um, what makes Henry McKenna very interesting, however, and what kind of made me gravitate towards the the whiskey itself is the fact that it's 10 years old. Now, there are not many 10-year-old age-stated whiskeys on the on the shelves consistently, let's say. Um the first one that comes to mind for me is Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare is 10 years old, Buffalo Trace product. Excuse me. One of my favorite whiskeys, by far one of my favorite whiskeys. Um Russell's Reserve 10-year, a wild turkey product, is another 10-year that comes to my mind. And then you have the harder-to-obtain uh, whiskeys like Michter's 10-year, which, you know, not going to brag, but your boy has. Um, that's up there in price. That's, you know, 100 to $130. Um, and you also have, like, you know, the, the old Rip Van Winkle 10-year. And I'm sure there's others that I'm just not thinking about right now. Uh, but those are the ones that come to mind first. Um, Rebel, Rebel Tenure that we just talked about. There's another one. And that age-stated 10-year whiskey, they're just, there's few and far between of them. There's not that many anymore. Um, the era of no-age statements is still running strong. Most whiskeys are not advertising an age statement on their bottles. So that is what drew me to this Henry McKenna 10-year, is the fact that it was 10 years old, um, bottled and bond, single barrel, for the measly price of, we'll range it, 35 to $45. Now, that's incredible. There's no other, there's no other way to put that. That price point is incredible, and I've even seen some people on YouTube um, who have reviewed this whiskey in the past say they've bought it for as low as $28. That is out of this world insane to me that this whiskey is coming through at $28. That just blows my mind that this could be a price, that that, that would be a price that this whiskey is found at. Um now that's all well and good if the whiskey is readily available, but the problem is this whiskey has won a few really notable awards that it's no longer, for a lot of people, easy to get. 
In 2018, this whiskey won Best Bourbon and Best Single Barrel at the San Francisco Spirit Awards. And in 2019, this whiskey won um, Best Whiskey in Show, which is essentially like the best picture at the Oscars. This won the best one. It was only the second bourbon ever to win that award behind a 2008 Parker's Heritage release. Um, Both Heaven Hill products have won, uh, have been the two only bourbons to, to win best whiskey in show, best picture. This is the departed of, of whiskeys. The departed is the first movie that comes to my mind when I think of best picture. I don't know why. Um, that's kind of strange. What else comes to mind? The anything Leo uh, Leo's been in, because the, the Revenant comes to mind. That definitely won Best Picture. Um, and Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King, because I just read an article about that today. Twenty years coming up since the Fellowship of the Ring. That's this year. Twenty year anniversaries this year. That's insane. I remember being nine, seven, eight, or nine, two thousand one. I was seven years old going to see Return of the King in theaters with my with my dad because it came out in 2003 and I was born in 96. Oh, so on the nose with this Henry McKenna tenure. Oh, by the way, Henry McKenna himself was an Irish guy. Shout out shout out to Henry McKenna. He came over from Ireland, brought his whiskey expertise and his distilling expertise to the states and he was really one of the first ones that emphasize aging whiskey in barrels. Matter of fact, he would not sell whiskey that was aged for under five years. And this is in the mid to late 1800s. So a total innovator in the whiskey game. Um, I believe Cole on Show Filter Podcast had mentioned something about him being super uh, super clean and, and really emphasized sanitation. So another very distinct trait to have in the mid to late 1800s when who knows what the hell you were getting in your bottles. So Henry McKenna wanted to make sure that we understood what was what we were consuming under his name, which I really appreciate. On the nose with this Henry McKenna 10 year, it is such a bourbony bourbon, it's not even funny. Vanilla and caramel are coming very forward on the nose with a little bit of oak behind and a tad bit of ethanol kind of a an alcoholy smell but not much kind of surprises me that i'm getting that on a 10 year old after a swirly poo that uh that that oak's a bit more pronounced Oh, a little bit of citrus in there as well. Really pleasant notes. Very standard bourbon notes, but they're very well paired. It might be a little bit underwhelming of a nose, but I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that for a ten-year bottle, you know, a ten-year bottle and bond single barrel, you might expect a plethora of of very strong hitting notes. You don't really get that with this. This is more subtle citrus subtle oak very forward vanilla and caramel though vanilla out the yin yang this is just very bourbony and that's all i'm getting with that so let's let's taste this henry mckenna tenure you guys cheers to another week that wasn't a good one thank you for tuning in schlante Yeah. First sip just goes down. As we know, coat the mouth a little bit. It's a little sour to begin. But overall, it's uh uh it's so good. Vanilla, more pronounced oak, a very more pronounced baking spice to this as well. Cinnamon. Um maybe even a little bit of like a nutmegish type of characteristic. That oak is more pronounced, and just vanilla, vanilla, vanilla.
Yeah, this is delicious, you guys. This is totally delicious. Um, that oak is hitting harder, much harder on the palate. Which is to be expected being a 10-year-old bourbon. You would expect that, that oak to be more pronounced. But other than that, yeah, a, a strong vanilla base comes right from the front. That transitions to a spicier finish. Um, the spices that I'm getting are m definitely more baking spices, as in cinnamon and nutmeg, rather than an oak spice or a rye spice. Um, a little bit of a sour note, which I think is, is due to the oak, um, due to the whiskey resting for 10 years. This has also been in this bottle for over a year, so I've had this bottle for a while. Um, I, I'm actually going to be buying a new, another bottle here soon, uh, from my favorite package store, Wyoming package. I hope they still have it. I should have bought it last weekend, but I didn't. Um, the finish, like I said, is, is spicy, but not rye spice and not oak spice. It's very baking spicy. And that, what I like about this, and I remember thinking this the first time I sipped Henry McKenna was how sweet it is throughout from the nose to the palate to the finish there's a sweetness a very like a Kentucky hug sweetness that that sits with you throughout the entire process that I love with my bourbons yeah that's the, the more sips you take the more pronounced that that uh, that sweetness is a, just an overload of vanilla I would even maybe consider this a vanilla bomb. Like, there's so much vanilla on this, it's it's crazy. Vanilla at the forefront. Uh, a little bit of caramel is mixed in there. On the palate, you're getting oak, cinnamon, nutmeg, those baking spices, and then the finish. It's not a terribly long finish, but it's packing the perfect punch of retaining that sweetness, but kind of emphasizing the spice just a hair more to let you know that you're drinking whiskey. Uh, overall, this, I don't want to, I want to be careful with this. I definitely want to be careful with this. My, my first instincts tell me if there was only one whiskey that I could choose for the rest of my life, that, that list is very small that I'm picking from. Right off the bat, I'm thinking Colonel E.H. Taylor Small Batch. I'm thinking Old Forester 1920. I'm thinking Buffalo Trace. I'm thinking Elijah Craig. But if I'm being honest with myself, Henry, good old Henry McKenna might take the cake. And I don't say that lightly. This is a perf... This... Like I said at the beginning of this review, this is the most bourbony bourbon of all time. This is just the essence of what bourbon is, what you think of as a bourbon with the this is definitely a high corn mash bill. I'm not entirely sure what the corn percentage is. I would assume it's around 75% if not more, maybe to more towards 78%. Um I'm actually curious as to what the mash bill is. Let's go on breaking bourbon and see what our friends over there have to say um i would have to imagine that this is at least 75 percent corn the vanilla sweetness throughout the little hint of spices throughout the palate throughout the experience you know from the front of the mouth to the finish is just such what i think of as a as a kentucky bourbon um, yeah, there we go. 78% corn, 12% malted barley, and 10% rye. So that is what this mash bill is. I'm thinking if I only got to choose one whiskey for the rest of my life, this might be it. This would be in the, in the top three. It would have to be. This is everything that I look for in a bourbon. I think it's delicious. And, um, I'm going to give it a s score. This might come as a surprise to some people. I am going to give it a score of 
yeah, I'm sticking with that. Given the MSRP of $35 to $45 for this bottle, there is, besides maybe Eagle Rare, when you can find it for a really good price, there might not be a better buy in whiskey. This is outrageously priced at $35. This is insane being a 10-year single-barrel bottle and bond, you know, multiple award-winning whiskey for $35. The problem is you can't really find it. Luckily, my scores are are more curtailed to the area that I'm in. I can find Henry McKenna fairly easy for around $45, and even that, I think, is a steal. Um, I would say going up to, I'm going to sound insane here, going up to even around $80 for this might be a fair price. Now, obviously the MSRP is sitting at around, well, 35 to 45 dollars you know give or take but to me when I when I taste this whiskey and I say to myself what would I pay because that's the only thing that matters the only thing that matters is what you would pay for your whiskey I don't give a shit about at the end of the day I don't give a shit about what MSRP is I don't give a shit about what other people have to say about it if I've tasted the whiskey and I think this is worth 80 bucks and I see it for 80 bucks, then I will buy it for 80 bucks. That's why I don't blame people if they see a Stag Junior for $200 and they have the $200 to spend and they buy that Stag Junior for $200, more power to them. You own a fantastic whiskey. You paid more for it based on what the distillery says the MSRP should be. But that's just the world we live in. Get used to it because it's not going to go away. If I saw this for 80 bucks and I was desperate for it, I would buy it. And I wouldn't even think twice about it. Um, so thirty-five to forty-five bucks for this, bonkers. Pound for pound, it's either the best price whiskey or the second best best price whiskey, depending on how Eagle Rare is doing. Especially if you get a single barrel of Eagle Rare. Oof. Um, but nine point five is the, is going to be my final score for this. This is a great great bourbon. It's something I'm going to have on my shelf forever. And in terms of day-to-day sipping, this is it. Um, I don't know if that's my highest score I've ever given out or not. I don't think it is. I may have given a Elijah Craig Barrel Proof a higher score. And the only reason I wouldn't choose an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof to as my whiskey I could drink for the rest of the time is just because it's too high proofed for the most part high proofs have their time and place and they're usually the best whiskeys however to drink that every single day would be tough um but we're almost 40 minutes in so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up this podcast I think I talked about everything I wanted to talk about this week um I'm recording this a little late so the video might be out a day later so but you know, as long as you guys are subscribing on iTunes and Spotify and Google Podcasts and Stitcher and Breaker and Overcast, that's what matters the most to me. Um, when this video does come out, make sure you like it on YouTube as well. Make sure you subscribe on there. I'm going to shoot to release this on Thursday. Um, on YouTube, I mean. Release this video podcast on Thursday. But um, until then, you guys, until next week, um, again, special shout outs to everyone that I mentioned on the show. Um, go follow all those accounts. I'm going to link my chill filtered episode into the bio of this episode. Um, make sure you guys are following Nick bossy, uh, on, on, uh, Instagram, which is Nick bossy music, uh, and happy birthday, Nick. Um, I want to give a special shout out to my, to my buddy, Nick bossy, who has sang the intro and outro music to this, to this podcast since day one. So shout out to you, Nick. You're a great guy. And I'm happy that you're a very close friend of mine. And happy birthday. Um, Other than that, you guys, I got a week of lifting coming up. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, a week of no whiskey. Um, Even though it's going to be tough. And week two of the NFL season. That's really all I've got going on this week. But until then... Um, until next week, you guys, I appreciate you guys checking out the show. I appreciate all the support and all the kind words I get every single week. And always remember, you guys, whiskey is the water of life. So let's start living. My hands are tired. The 
paying my bills, I'm staring at a bottle, I'm aiming to kill. The weeks passing by and the seasons to change, and I'm playing my song, trying to make me a name. People say as they walk out the bar The kids go on places, maybe even a star but They don't play country down in Nashville today Just the same chord progression with nothing to say What happened to country? Three chords and the truth And who's gonna step up? Fill their big shoes Writing songs about outlaws Sing it all night And songs that'll make A grown man cry They use auto tune now down on Music Row. The true country died there a long time ago. No, they don't play Waylon on the boulevard, but they'll do anything to be rock stars. What happened to country? Three chords and the truth. And who's gonna step up? Fill their big shoes, writing songs about our loss, singing all night, and songs that'll make a grown man cry. hope for us yet cause there's millions of people who cannot forget the way Johnny Cash brought a tear to their eyes or how Marty Robbins painted Texas skies what happened to country the cards and the truth and who's gonna step up and fill their big shoes writing songs about outlaws Singing all night and songs that'll make a grown man cry. A grown man cry. A grown man cry. I won't let country die.